Miami Dolphins have agreed to a contract extension with defensive tackle Zach Sealer. Maybe not the defensive tackle you were expecting, but it's the one we got. We got our immediate reactions here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. You are Locked on Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Miami, welcome to another episode of Locked on Dolphins. It's your team every day here on the Locked on Network. Today, Sunday, August 27, 2023. I'm your host, Kyle Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked on Dolphins, co-host of Locked on NFL Scouting. You can find our shows on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Shout out to our everydayers who do keep it locked in with us on a daily basis. Because we don't just say it, we live it. It is your team every day. Uh, today's episode of Locked On Dolphins is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. And silly me, I thought I hung up the recording last night after the Dolphins preseason game at about oh, it was eleven ten. Produced it, hit publish, and said, "Okay, I'll talk to everybody on Monday morning." Nope. Rolled out of bed this morning, got my cup of coffee, got my day started, was grinding some tape, and boom, Adam Schefter drops the breaking news. Uh, the Dolphins agreeing to terms with a contract extension for Zach Sealer on a three-year contract worth up to $38.65 million. That includes $20 million guaranteed per source. Adam Schefter continued this contract was negotiated by Drew and Jason Rosenhaus. Wonder who your source was there. Hmm. Um, <laughs> it's a big move for the Dolphins. We've been talking about flexibility and making decisions on who you want to tie yourself to and strategizing the cap. And you've had this lingering aura of a running back. And you've had this lingering standoff with Christian Wilkins that has seen him not participate in the preseason uh, as they've tried to finalize that contract extension. Well, the Dolphins signed a defensive tackle to a contract extension, and it wasn't Christian Wilkins. And I don't want to make this about Christian Wilkins entirely. We'll, we'll talk about implications for others. But uh, I, I want to start first and foremost with Zach Sealer. Uh, finances, uh, the details here, where this ranks in the spectrum of defensive tackle contracts, because I think Telling that story is going to tell you how and why this deal got done. So Zach Sealer signs a three-year extension. I'll say it again for $38.65 million up to $38.65 million. That includes $20 million guaranteed. He was already on the books this year for just short of $3 million in cash. So this is $3 million in cash this year, and they'll structure the money however they want to, to maximize the cap opportunity. But it was one year, $3 million was effectively what he had. And then on the back end of that, you put a new three years up to $38.65 million. In total, this contract, Zach Sealer is now under contract for four years and up to $41.625 million. That would be an average of $10.4 million dollars per season across the totality of his contract. Not his new three years, but the totality of the contract is $10.4 million per season for the next four seasons. That, in the spectrum of interior defensive linemen across the league, is 19th in the league. It checks in just in front of former Miami Dolphin, and I still, for the life of me, cannot figure out how the New England Patriots have managed to make this level of commitment to this player. And no disrespect to Devon Godshaw, but Zach Sealer is every bit of a good defender as Devon Godshaw, and he's a more disruptive player in the passing game as well. Um, so $10.4 million puts him 19th just in front of Devon Godshaw. $10.4 million. Also, when you look across the league at some of the other... Uh, contracts that have been signed, especially in this offseason, you think about Quinn and Williams and whatever Chris Jones is going to get, presuming that gets sorted out in Kansas City. I mean, th th those are th two and a half, three X this deal. And yeah, they're they're more elite football players, and I understand that and I respect that. 
But then you get Dexter Lawrence at 22, Javon Hargrave at 21. It sounds like Christian Wilkins is looking for 21, 22 million dollars per. Zach Sealer's on the books for the next four years for half of that money in this rat race to reset the interior defensive lineman market. You get Zach Sealer on the books for 10.4. That's why this got done. You can look across the league at other defensive tackles who I don't think are better than Zach Sealer. Ed Oliver in Buffalo. He signed for an average of 17 per season. 17. When Ed Oliver signed that contract, I said, man, that, that is a brutal blow to Miami's hopes to get Zach Sealer under contract. Because Zach's a better player and Ed just pulled 17. Ed cashed in on all the other defensive tackle signings to a degree that was it really felt like a gut punch. Zach signed for less than David Onyemeta just got on a new contract with the Atlanta Falcons this offseason. And Onyemeta is probably a better pass rush player, but he's nowhere near the player that Zach is against the run. Zach Sealer is legitimately one of the five best short yardage run defenders in football. That's not a nose tackle. That's not like a DJ Reader, uh, a Dexter Lawrence, 330 plus pound type player. And how many short yardage, third and fourth down runs on the inside can you think of in the last three years that Zach Sealer was the one that shut it down? I can think of more than I can count on one hand. Um, Anya Meta, just to follow that up, signed a three-year, $35 million contract with Atlanta for with $24.5 million in guaranteed money. So Anya Meta was just short. It was like 11 point. Oh man, I'm going to do math here live on the show. This never ends well. $11.67 million was what Anya Meta signed for. And he got over $8 million per year in guaranteed money. Sealer, even if you just look at the new years of the deal, I mean, sure, you could say that Sealer, uh, from a raw numbers perspective, up to 38 across three years, that's a bigger number than 35. But it includes $20 million guaranteed. The Dolphins gave Sealer less guaranteed money than, than Anya Meta got. And one of it is you're on the open market and negotiating in free agency against other teams. And the other one is just an exclusive negotiation between a team and a player. So I, I get the mechanics of why it may not have checked in where some of these other contracts did. But if you're telling me Zach Sealer is going to sign for what it's, it's short of 13, if you just look at the new years of the deal. But across the four-year totality of his contract, now 10.4, this is a steal for the Dolphins. This is an absolute steal for Miami. And it's a at this price point, you could have told me he would have got 15, 16, 17, or more than Ed Oliver, and I would have believed you for the player that Zach Sealer is. And that's just the nature of spending on the interior defensive line right now against three down play for, for three down players. They're a very large piece of the puzzle because everybody wants to play two high shells. Everybody wants to be in light boxes. So those dudes that can do it and simultaneously rush the passer, they really move the needle. They've suddenly found a level of, of value in today's NFL that they simply have not had prior. And Zach can be that, and I think Zach will be that. And we're going to see Zach be that for the next four seasons at least. And that's a development that if you had asked me beforehand, um, he was one of the ones that I was a little leery about Miami's ability to get done. Well, they got it done, and they got it done a great deal for themselves. And it's a good deal for Zach Sealer, too, obviously. Long-term stability. This was Ozzie Newsom's last draft selection in Baltimore. We'll talk a little bit more about Zach Sealer as the player next here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins and why this deal is a good deal for him as well as the Dolphins. August is just about over, and that means it's the official start of fantasy football. So I hope you're taking advantage and drafting accordingly. Get championship ready for your hometown league by trying out best ball on Underdog Fantasy. All you have to do is one live snake draft with no waivers, no trades. Underdog sets your best lineup each and every week for you. Try it out with Underdog's Best Ball Mania Tournament. The largest fantasy football contest of all times is back, including... $15 million in prizes, including an absurd 
$3 million grand prize going to the winner. Last year's winner drafted their team in July. You're running out of time, so quit screwing around. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the App Store and sign up with promo code Locked On to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com, promo code Locked On. So Zach Sealer, the football player, he obviously did not play in the preseason contest uh, last night against Jacksonville. And his presence, along with that of Christian Wilkins, was sorely missed. <laughs> Jacksonville said, okay, I see 96 in here. I see 90 in here. I see 95 in here. We're going to pound the rock. And they did. Um, Zach Sealer will always have the legacy uh, for draft Knicks and team building aficionados as Ozzie Newsom's last pick. And Ozzie Newsom, of course, was the longtime general manager of the Baltimore Ravens, uh, kind of a legendary executive in the game. And his last draft class, last pick he makes, Zach Sealer. Small school guy out of Ferris State and uh, was drafted at 238 in the seventh round out of Pickney, Michigan. And uh, he put up some crazy good numbers. And when he came through the, the pre-draft process, uh, testing, you know, uh, at six, almost six, six, 290 pounds, almost 34 inch arms. And at 290 pounds out of small school Ferris, he ran a four, eight, four, 40 yard dash. It's an excellent time. He ran a seven, one, four, three cone drill for a six, six player at 290 pounds, an outstanding time. He had a standing broad jump of almost 10, uh, 10 feet. It's outstanding. 31 bench press. Uh, so you have 225. So you have uh, the height and the size component. You have the raw athleticism and explosiveness, and then you have the upper body power. Now, he just happened to play at Ferris State, and Ferris State's not really up there on the pecking order of your NFL factories, although there, there's been a few uh, Ferris State guys that have actually come through, a lot of them on the defensive line and, and had successful NFL careers, although I think you could probably make the challenge that Zach Sealer's now up at the top of this list. So he gets picked by Baltimore, of course, Miami in 2019 with the Brian Flores regime, plucks him off of waivers. He comes in, and he's one of the best players on the defensive front immediately. And he has just been persistently growing and evolving and improving. Uh, he was waived. He claimed on December 5th by Miami. And then he got himself a three-year contract extension in 2020. And then he got himself another three-year extension in 2023. Awesome story. If you love the story of the NFL and the pathways that players get for every Alabama and Auburn and LSU and Michigan and Ohio State and USC, there's guys like this that are just lunch pail, blue collar, slip through the cracks. Very clearly have the goods just based off the athletic profile we went through. He has been nothing but an exemplary member of what you want to embody with the football team. And he's darn good. And um, he's he's put out uh, some impressive numbers over the course of the last few seasons. Um, I think last season, from a volume perspective, we've talked about the snaps that Christian Wilkins and Zach Sealer have both taken and their workload being a special dynamic of what the Dolphins had last year. The Dolphins are going to need that again this year, unless they go out and they find a whole bunch of extra interior defensive line depth that's just lying around. But I think about Zach Sealer, and, and you know we've talked at length about Christian Wilkins because he was the first-round pick of the team in 2019 and how this scheme change can benefit him. And I think a lot of this is probably applicable to Zach Sealer as well. Um, I don't want to compare the two because uh, I do think Christian Wilkins from a uh, balance center of gravity perspective is probably where he has the edge over Zach. Um, but one thing that I do feel very comfortable in saying is um, Zach Sealer being through what he's been through to get this opportunity and now have this front office amidst different coaching staffs reward him. 
I think is a testament to his versatility as a football player. And I have very little concerns in the way of what Zach Sealer is going to be able to do. And I have a very hard time based on the financials, uh, picturing a pathway in which the Dolphins come out of the, the other end of this contract with remorse or regret for the value that they're going to get. So it's a strong value for the team, but Zach Sealer himself, and he has the same questions that, that Christian Wilkins does, right? I mean, he, his career high in sacks is three and a half, and that's happened two of the last three seasons. He's had three and a half sacks. So from a pass rush value perspective, I think that's where if things take off for Zach, he might get to 2025 and say, dang, I, sh I should have played that year out and then signed. But for a player like Zach out of Ferris State, seventh round pick, to get offered over $10 million per season, I think that's where it, it makes a lot of sense for Zach Sealer as well because of the pathway that he's been on. He didn't get a fat signing bonus when he came into the league. He's not a first round pick. He didn't get a fully guaranteed rookie contract. He'd been cut by Baltimore. And I'm pretty sure he spent some time on their practice squad too. Yeah, he didn't make the he didn't even make the initial roster. He was placed on on waivers on August 31st, 2019 and then signed to the practice squad. He got promoted on October 5th and less than 2 months later he's cut by Baltimore before Miami claimed him. So the pathway for Zach 10 plus million dollars per season, three new years of almost 13 per. You're talking my language. Absolutely. Now, this is not just a Zach Sealer domino, although a, a lot of people have asked, uh, what does this mean for Miami's pursuit of Jonathan Taylor? And what does this mean for Christian Wilkins' potential contract? And what does this mean for the interior offensive line group? Well, that's what we're going to cover here next as we get ready to, to finish reacting to this breaking news on this Sunday morning that Zach Sealer will be a long-term member of this Dolphins nucleus. Listen, guys, uh, I love live events as much as anybody, but sometimes the hassle of trying to get yourself lined up and set up for success months in advance can be a little tedious. Buying tickets for your favorite events shouldn't be so stressful. And thanks to our friends at Game Time, it's not. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets, and start getting hyped for all of the fun that you are going to have. Game time is the place for last-minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. You name it. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and the same row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snag the tickets without the stress. At game time, download the game time app. Create an account and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So um, what does this mean for everybody else? It's a great question. And I am going to sit here and hold my breath to no end that whilst I am recording this podcast, there is not more breaking news that eventually drops. Um, the, the big one is Christian Wilkins, obviously. Uh, because Christian Wilkins is looking for somewhere in the ballpark of 2x this dollar amount. And I think Christian Wilkins is probably a better football player than, than Zach Sealer, but I don't think he's 2x better of a football player than Zach Sealer. And that's why in my mind, over the course of this summer, I'm mentally prepared for Christian getting 20, Zach getting 15 to 17. And, and you know, that, that margin is going to be a big difference. And it, at that point you, you pay the extra couple million dollars per season for the better player. But now you're, you're, you're literally talking a, a stratosphere of twice the dollar amount. And I love Christian Wilkins as much as anybody, but the question the Dolphins have to ask themselves as they have presumably had offers on the table and are negotiating with Christian Wilkins, is Christian Wilkins worth 2x what Zach Sealer is? I don't have the answer. I don't know what the Dolphins' answer to that question is. But you have to at least ask the question when this, this contract comes in at this dollar amount. Do I think this precludes you from getting something done with Christian Wilkins? No, I do not. 
Um, but again, it's the story has kind of been, you're not going to be able to have everybody. And kind of the, the middle class, I, I think you can look at three players who I would grade as quality stars for your team. And those are the players that I think are in jeopardy. And one of them was Zach Sealer. The other two were Rob Hunt and Connor Williams. That's the group. Now, in my mind, one of those two guys on the the offensive line feels like they're on the bubble. And one of them will definitely be on the bubble if the Dolphins go out and they acquire another cornerstone player that's going to command $10 plus million per season in Jonathan Taylor. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what's right and what's wrong. I think there's a short-term answer. There's a long-term answer. There's an ideological answer. There's a utopian answer. They're, 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 they're all different answers, right? And what the Dolphins are going to do is why doing this job is hard, why building a team is hard, because you have to take all the information that's available to you. You have to be as objective as you possibly can. You have to be strategic. You have to make take risks. No risk it, no biscuit. And you make a decision and you go. What I would say is Miami getting Christian Wilkins or getting Zach Sealer on the books for this makes it feel more likely that Christian is going to be put in a position to potentially play this year on the fifth-year option. And you would have the franchise tag available to you if you needed it next offseason. You technically could have as much as three more years of control of Christian Wilkins between his fifth-year option this year, the franchise tag next year, and the franchise tag again in 2025. You could do that. I'm not saying they should do that. But like that's the point where, well, we got Zach for 10-4 slash just under 13. Um, we feel like our offer based, based off the resumes is very, very fair. And it puts you in a stratosphere of your peers that were drafted in the same areas you were. So your financial expectations and your economic expectations are different. And Christian's going to say, well, I understand that. And I'm looking at the guys who I went in the first round with, and these guys all got like $21, $22 million. Does, does someone blink? I don't know. What does this mean for Jonathan Taylor? What does this mean for the Dolphins cap space? I think it's probably the more appropriate question because I've seen that question a lot. Um, the question is... What does this do for Miami from their cap perspective? I don't think it does much. You, you have to remember, Zach was already on the books for less than $3 million in cash this year. His cap, it was like $3.2 million. Adding money as an extension to that deal, now we'll have to see the specifics of how they write the signing bonus and so on and so forth, but with a cap number that low, I don't suspect that this is a cap manufacturing maneuver in any capacity because he wasn't under contract in 2024. So now you're going to have a bigger cap hit in 2024 than what you were committed to because you didn't have one. And in 2023, the cap hit was $3.2 million. I'm not sure how you would reduce the number, and I don't think you need to reduce the number. I think it's a very healthy cap number for, for Zach Sealer. There's other, you want to pull cap levers? There's levers to pull, but I don't think Zach Sealer getting a contract extension is going to be among them. We'll still have to see the final numbers. I don't have that right yet, but I wanted to hop on and record as soon as I possibly could and give you guys my immediate reactions to Zach Sealer's three-year contract extension to remain a member of the Miami Dolphins. That is going to do it for this emergency podcast episode of Locked on Dolphins. Who knows? You might, you might get another five or six of these over the next 72 hours uh, because it's going to be happening. Fast and furious here with the teams now switching gears and getting ready for the start of the league uh, season. So plan accordingly. Keep it locked in right here on Locked on Dolphins. It is your team every day. I appreciate you guys checking out the show. Make it a great of your rest of your day. Hope to see you again next time. Fins up. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts.